National statistics suggest that one in two people will develop cancer at some point in their life. Many people were counting the day that they were told they had cancer as being the worst day of their lives. But the good news is there are promising survival rates, but still the most important thing is early detection and treatment. And as an orthopedic surgeon, I've seen lots of cancer patients, but sadly, by the time they come to see us, it's usually too late because it means it has spread to the bone and is no longer curable. I'm making this video because I genuinely believe that if this information is more freely available, it will save lives. And maybe not yours, but the ones that we love and share our lives with, like being able to spot a lingering cough in your mother or your partner's slightly altered toileting habits. And we know that cancer survival is strongly associated with the stage of presentation. So in other words, the earlier you come and see your doctor, the better your potential outcomes. And no doctor should accuse you of wasting their time, even if it turns out to be nothing, which by the way, is the case most of the time. So we'll discuss common cancers, common signs and symptoms, and some of the screening programs that I think you really should know. So what is cancer? To understand this, we need to understand the norm and our bodies are made up of trillions of cells which have very specific function and have to maintain a regulated life cycle. So the cells die and they're replaced constantly throughout our lives. And that process is regulated by our genetic makeup. However, genetic mutations which can be acquired from carcinogens such as smoking cause abnormal cell behavior and cause those cells to replicate uncontrollably till they form a lump known as a tumor but not all tumors are cancerous and malignant. Benign tumors don't tend to spread and therefore don't pose a significant risk. Malignant tumors, however, share a general commonality and that is the ability to invade and grow into surrounding tissues and spread via the bloodstream or the lymphatic system to other parts of the body. And because almost any cell can be affected, there are lots of different types of cancers. When a cancer breaks away, it can spread to almost any part of the body but the common sites are bone, lung, liver, and brain. And that's when it often then causes symptoms, which mainly are pain and lethargy. But the real key and challenge is making the diagnosis before this happens. And that's because many cancers in the early stages don't have many symptoms, or at least symptoms that can't be explained away, like having a busy life or getting a bit older, which is what I once heard Bill Turnbull say last year when he was diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer. So there are screening programs that you should be aware of. And the most important ones in the UK are created to detect cancers before people develop symptoms. I think there are similar programs in the US, but the ones to be aware of here are the breast cancer screening program for women aged 50 to 70, bowel cancer screening for men and women aged between 60 and 74. There's a targeted lung screening program for 55 to 74 year olds if you have smoked. There's a cervical cancer screening program for women aged 25 to 64. There's a prostate informed choice program for PSA blood testing. If you're over 50, you have a family history or you're black, speak to your GP and request a blood test. Although cancer doesn't discriminate, some people are more at risk for certain cancers than others. And why? Fundamentally, that comes down to a balance between genetic predisposition and lifestyle factors. Lifestyle factors are associated with higher risk of developing cancer, which should come as no surprise. And the common ones include smoking, which is a significant risk factor for developing several cancers. And interestingly, that also includes secondhand smoking, sedentary lifestyles and lack of exercise, alcohol, even moderate intake has been linked to increased cancer risk being overweight, unhealthy diets, which are high in processed foods and sugary drinks, with lack of fiber and low in fruit and vegetables. And there are non-controllable risk factors, which include age, family history, previous cancers, ethnicity, as we know that if you're black, your risk of prostate cancer is twice as high as the general population, cancer types and symptoms. In the UK, national statistics suggest that one in two people will develop cancer at some point in their life. And the most common types to be aware of include breast cancer, which we know is the most common cancer to affect women, lung cancer, which we know tends to affect smokers more, but isn't isolated to smokers, prostate cancer, which we know is twice as common in black men, and bowel cancer, which is also called colorectal cancer. And I won't go into each of them individually because they all have their own disease profiles, but I will leave some useful information in the description. But the common symptoms to be aware of include for breast cancer, noticing a lump in the breast or swelling in the armpit, 
dimpling, change in the size of the breast, noticing discharge from the nipple or a newly inverted nipple, lung cancer, persistent cough, breathlessness, pain on breathing, coughing up blood. Prostate cancer can, can cause increased frequency in passing urine or feeling as though you need to strain or as though you haven't fully emptied your bladder. Bowel cancer can cause a change in toileting habits, causing our stool to be softer or harder. You may notice blood in the stool, blood when wiping, tummy pain, bloating. But there are other cancers actually to be aware of, including cervical cancer, skin cancer, stomach, liver, bone. But all cancers make us feel tired and can cause us to lose weight, which can't be explained elsewhere and can cause an anemia. And if you develop any of these symptoms, especially a deep ache in your bones or in your back, do not ignore it and present to your doctor. It's also important to be aware of your body. And I don't think that we need to live in fear, but we should be aware. And there are two slightly concerning trends which I've noticed and then have found reported by the American Cancer Society. The first is colorectal or bowel cancer numbers now rising in younger patients, which they think is down to modern lifestyle, which includes smoking, regular alcohol intake, more sedentary work and lifestyle, diets that are high in fat and low in fiber. The second is increasing rates of breast cancer in women aged under 40. And we know that more than half of those diagnoses were down to genetic mutations in the BRCA genes, but there are reports of increasing incidence in younger women thought to be due to us having children much later in life and therefore age of first pregnancy is going up. So I urge everybody to know their bodies and be able to detect subtle changes. And that includes doing regular exams, which include breast, testicular and skin. And I was getting ready to promote regular self-examinations, but research from Cancer Research UK has indicated that doing regular self-examinations doesn't actually reduce your chance of dying from cancer, but does double your risk of having an unnecessary biopsy. And I don't really know what to do with that because I still think that you should be aware of your body and do regular examinations and know how to identify signs but just be aware that sometimes we can cause ourselves unnecessary anxiety by worrying about things which actually turn out to be normal most of the time. Though there are lots of challenges posed by cancer, there is a beacon of hope in the remarkable strides that we've made in cancer treatment over the last two decades. The landscape of cancer care has evolved significantly, offering new possibilities. So really one should be optimistic now. And treatment usually is coordinated by an oncologist. First is surgery, which remains the cornerstone of cancer treatment and advances in surgical techniques have improved precision and reduced invasiveness with minimally invasive procedures, robotic surgery, targeted interventions that make more effective removal of tumors while minimizing damages to surrounding tissues. This will likely be combined with radiation therapy where innovations have enabled more targeted and precise delivery of radiation, minimizing damages to nearby healthy tissues Chemotherapy, which is a long-standing pillar in cancer treatment, has witnessed the development of more targeted and less toxic drugs. Immunotherapy, which harnesses the body's immune system to identify and destroy cancer cells, offering renewed hope for previously challenging to treat cancers. Targeted therapies, which focus on specific molecules involved in cancer growth, disrupting the signals that allow cancer cells to proliferate. These therapies are tailored to the unique genetic makeup of each patient's tumor, meaning more personalized treatment strategies. I am no oncologist, but researching this video, I couldn't help but feel optimistic about the future. I sense a somewhat of a paradigm shift in precision medicine, advances in genomic profiling, meaning more personalized and tumor specific treatment programs. However, the key is still prevention and early diagnosis. So I will leave some useful links to some reliable resources in the description. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Be good.